Hi, my name is Tara Arcadia. I'm a co-lead on the Kickstarter campaign for fair access to global health internships and I'm also a medical student at Dartmouth College and I'm here today with Lisa Adams. And I'm the Associate Dean for Global Health and Director of the Center for Health Equity at Dartmouth Medical School, the Geisel School of Medicine. I've been focused on care of underserved populations really from the time I was in medical school, maybe even before then, um, and have really focused my career on working um, predominantly overseas with underserved populations and focused on tuberculosis and HIV care and control. I really had the privilege of working in a number of different countries with fantastic international partners, mostly in Sub-Saharan Africa, um, but also um, to some extent in Eastern Europe and, um, and in Asia. I've had um, lots of opportunities to work with, consult for, partner with, the World Health Organization, um, other global partners, Global Fund um, against TB, uh, HIV, TB, and malaria is another partner that I've worked with. Um, so working with ministries of health in different countries, um, I've had the opportunity, obviously, to interact with many different donors and other um, technical agencies. So given all of your background in this field, I wonder if you could just share with us what do you see as the major challenges facing global health in the next 20 years? It's a great question because I always think back to when I was in medical school 20, 25 years ago and global health didn't exist as a field back then. I mean, there was international health, tropical medicine, which some may consider the precursors to global health, but I don't think anyone could have imagined global health as the both academic discipline and sort of area of practice and service that it is today. Mm -hmm. So when I try to look forward um, and think about what global health is going to look like 20 years from now, um, it's really trying to look into that crystal ball and see what are going to be the challenges um, moving forward. I think for many of us it's, about, it's going to be about building partnerships. It's going to be about how to develop equitable partnerships with our international colleagues. It's going to be less about the old traditional nor global north assist, global south paradigm um, that many um, are, uh, are very familiar with and, and still used to practicing. It's going to be much more about how do we really work to to build these equitable partnerships so that we're really benefiting each other. How do we learn from our international partners too about what they've had to do in um, because of scarcity, um, out of necessity, to develop really efficient and effective healthcare systems. Well, the, the big partners um, like the World Health Organization uh, and others are going to play a critical role in helping to shape how um, both healthcare is delivered in the future and how global health is, in, is envisioned um, as a field and as a practice. So I think their role is going to be very important in helping to set the tone um, and again by focusing on um, the, the building of partnerships, the um, working in collaboration um, across disciplines, I think those are going to be some of the key things that I think the big um, global health leaders and, and partners are going to have to be pushing for. So, as you also know, um, we recently launched a Kickstarter campaign to support uh, increased access to training opportunities at these types of global health agencies for candidates who are from low and middle income countries. So, as you also know, this is definitely a youth-led campaign, and so I wonder what you think about the potential of those kinds of campaigns to achieve real change or addressing these issues. Oh, I think those kinds of campaigns hold great promise. In fact, they inspire those of us who still feel youthful at heart, but may not be youthful in, in age or years. So I think actually they play a very important role. And I think in this campaign in particular, it really sends an important message because this campaign is about opening up opportunities for individuals, future leaders in global health from low-income countries. And I really do think this is about leveling the playing field, about providing those opportunities. And if we from the high income countries aren't willing to take the necessary steps to ensure those opportunities are available to our colleagues and partners and the future generations of global health leaders from low income countries, if we aren't willing to do it, who will?
Well, when I think about health equity, and as I said, our, our, the vision for the Center for Health Equity is a world with health equity for all, I think we also have to think that that includes equity in education as well. And again, if we are going to really take those words to heart about providing equitable opportunities, that we have to think not just about providing access to um, quality and affordable health care, but it's about providing access to educational opportunities. That to me is part of the, of the health of a, of a nation, of a community, of a society, and so that's part of providing health equity.